So in the last video we uh, assembled the Spectre DIY and uh, here I want to show you how to get the firmware there and how to set it up, how to start using it. So uh, we have this board, uh, QR code scanner and the power bank, everything is assembled uh, and ready to work. So how do we get the firmware there? Uh, there is a mini USB uh, connector on the top uh, that actually uh, can help you to upload the firmware there. Uh, to make it working, the first thing that we need to do is to make sure that this jumper next to it uh, is uh, set to the window position, um, labeled ST-Link, ST-OK. Uh, this is how the board gets the power from this mini-USB and also enables the firmware upgrade. Uh, then, the only thing that we need is to connect the board over mini-USB. And then you see that on the computer it appeared as a DIS F469 and I mm, volume. And there are two text files, and doesn't matter what, uh, are, what they are about. Uh, so we will just drag and drop here our firmware and it will be flashed to the microcontroller. So to get the firmware we need to go to the Spectre DIY repository and go to the releases and download this uh, spectradiy.bin. Alternatively, you can build it yourself, uh, but uh, for simplicity at the moment, I will just show how to um, use pre-built firmware. Now, we just copy this file uh, over to this uh, new mounted drive, and it will take a while because it is not um, a real USB drive, it is actually flashing this uh, firmware to the microcontroller, so it will take a while. And keep in mind that actually anyone can just take your device, connect it, and upload new firmware there. The only thing that we can do is to walk the firmware from reading and uh, also potentially for writing. But uh, we will get to it when we have a written boot order. So it is on the roadmap, but not implemented yet. Uh, so now you saw that the drive uh, actually get unmounted and mounted again. And if you check it out, uh, it is empty again. So uh, if we look at the screen of the device now, uh, we actually see and that we can uh, choose the pin code now. So the firmware is already there. Uh, we don't need this mini USB cable anymore. So we can just disconnect it and put the jumper to the bottom position to get the power from USB. And now we can just uh, turn on the power bank and again get our screen with the pin code. Uh, so, uh, the pin codes, uh, the only thing that it does, it helps you to detect uh, if, uh, yeah, the secret, some secret, unique secret that is, was generated uh, on the first boot is still there or not. Uh, so, and it also, like, um, wipes everything if you enter the pin code incorrectly several times, like 10, I think. Uh, okay, and you see that there is also a word at the moment. And when you start typing the pin code, let's use... Two, 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 two. Uh, the string of words actually extends and it is unique for this particular secret that was generated. So if someone uh, uploads the new firmware to the device uh, and the secret gets erased, uh, then you will see that uh, actually the words are different. Okay, so I'm using two, 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 two. Uh, you don't need to use only four digits. You can do whatever you want. Uh, but I will use this. Okay, and now we have a choice uh, either to generate a new key or enter recovery phrase. So uh, generating new key happens using both true random number generator that is on the board and also uh, user entropy that you actually provided already when you were clicking, clicking the buttons. So like whenever you are interacting with the screen, it gathers uh, the coordinates and the mm, clock um, ticks number of clock cycles and puts it uh, into the entropy. So to improve some entropy, you can just drag the thing a bit uh, and then, yeah, you, it will get better. Mm. Okay, so we generated an entropy, uh, a recovery phase, we can set the password if we want. Uh, and now it uh, created uh, the wallets for the testnet, uh, but by default, it doesn't store your recovery phase because Application microcontrollers are not super secure, so either you can use a own password or alternatively you can just memorize your mnemonic and enter it uh, every time. 
Uh, still, uh, for development, you can go to settings and actually uh, click on save key to the memory. Yeah, I want to encrypt. And now it is saved to the memory. Great. Uh, and uh, then there is also another thing, so you can show it if you want. Uh, and also there is this security things, uh, where you can e enable USB communication. Uh, yeah, if you want to use it non in, in uh, not in an ergot mode, and also the developer mode, such that you can actually communicate with the board uh, with Python there, change Python files and so on. Uh, I am not touching it at the moment. Maybe I will make another video on. Uh, development. Okay, uh, so now uh, how do we import, uh, create a wallet on Bitcoin Core or on Spectre Desktop? So I'm using Rectest, so I will switch to Rectest now. And if you are reckless and using mainnet, then switch to mainnet. Uh, and now here on the laptop, I can go to uh, my Spectre Desktop. I already have here the wallet and the device. Uh, this one, the dev kit. Uh, so I will just add a new one. Uh, first I need to tell the keys of the device to Spectre Desktop, so I'm adding a new device. And I say that it is uh, DIY Spectre. Uh, and now I can just scan the master keys. Here, correspondingly, I have the menu Master Public Keys, uh, where there is a single key, multi-sig, they are both SegWit, native SegWit. And if you want, you can also go to More Keys and uh, either enter derivation, custom derivation path or uh, show the native segwit things. Uh, so I will just use the single key. Uh, and here you have a QR code, the, the key itself, and also uh, the two toggles. So you can either hide the derivation path if, uh, for example, you're using it with a blue wallet, uh, they uh, don't need this derivation. Uh, and also you can convert it from this VPOP or, you know, this XYZ pops uh, to classical X pops. So in this case, it will be TPOP. Uh, yeah, so depending on your software wallet, you can um, choose appropriate format. So I will keep it as a default. And now here I can click on scan. Okay. And I can just scan the QR code. Uh, and I also can scan the multi-signature QR codes if you will create a multi-signature address. Okay, so now just continue. We have a new device called Spectre here. Uh, and we can also create a new wallet now. Let's start with a single key wallet. Uh, Segwit, simple, Spectre, continue, use this key. Okay, so we have now the first address. Uh, and we can actually verify it. So uh, we can click on verify address here and it will start scanning. You see the red, red light here. So I just scan this QR code. And if it is a correct address, then it will display the corresponding QR code and the address on the screen. Uh, if uh, at some point I uh, am, for example, on a different network, uh, then this address will not work. So if I verify it now, try to verify it now. Then it tells me that uh, this address doesn't belong to any wallet, uh, run device or network. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so let's get some money on this address. And I have some money already uh, on my other wallet. So I can just take this address and go to my other wallet and click to send. Uh, here and I want to send one Bitcoin. Okay, and create unsigned transaction. Uh, so it creates a transaction that I can sign with my other device. Uh, so let me just turn it on. Surprisingly, I'm using the same uh, pin code here, but actually the words are different because it has a unique secret. And yeah, we'll let keep from memory. And then switch to rec test and sign transaction. Um, okay, can't find the wallet on in the input. Um, interesting. Let's see what's wrong. Um, pom, pom, pom. Verify address. The address is correct. Ok, 
Remember, I will try to focus between. Yeah, so here spending uh, one Bitcoin plus the fee to this address. And I can compare that here, if I go to wallets, default, the first address should be the same. So I see that it is uh, VCRT1Q, blah, 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 and Swiss2P. Yeah, so it looks good. So now I can just confirm. Uh, and I have a transaction here, pretty dense. That should be fine. So scan send transaction on Spectre desktop. And let's try to scan it. So it scanned and it sends uh, the money. Great. Uh, now in the in this uh, wallet symbol that you have, uh, we can actually see that there is a pending transaction, uh, and we can maybe send some money back or send the money to a new multi-signature wallet. So just uh, for fun, let's create a multi-signature wallet, and it will be two of two uh, with both of the devices. Continue. Uh, it already uh, suggests what keys we should use, create a wallet, and uh, we have our first address. Uh, so with the single key addresses everything is easy, the device knows uh, its private key, uh, and it knows that it belongs to this wallet, but with the multi-signature it's not the case, because, uh, well, basically we decided that you want to actually tell the device that there is a multi-signature wallet. So you need to uh, import the device, uh, import the wallet to the device. So uh, at the moment, for example, if you try to verify this address, it will tell you that address doesn't belong to any wallet. Uh, and uh, that's because uh, this device doesn't know about this wallet. So we need to go to the settings. Uh, and yeah, we have some control of rescanning, importing the key pool if you have uh, an old wallet. And also we have this uh, wallet descriptor and a name, so this is exactly what is encoded there. Uh, and we need to uh, just import it. So we go to wallets here, uh, and we create a new wallet, we add a new wallet. Uh, the focus is terrible, but yeah. And I scan it, and it tells me the policy, two of two multi-seq, native segwit, uh, the first key is mine, and the second one is external. And then if I scan exactly the same QR code with my other device, um, yeah, here, so I uh, go to add new wallet. Then you see that we have the same policy, and... In this case, the second key is belonging to this device, and the first one uh, is external. So we can just compare uh, that they both have the same information, and they both control one of the keys. And we confirm that, yeah, we want to add this wallet here. Okay. And now, uh, when we go back to the addresses, we actually can uh, verify these addresses now. So we click on verify address, it scans this address and uh, boom, boom, boom. it didn't work for some reason. Let's say uh, we try again. Okay, this time it worked. So I suppose um, I had to select the network again, so it is a bug that I need to fix. Uh, okay, so now I verified this uh, address with one device, uh, and I can do the same with another one. So I already know that there is a bug, so I just choose the network again and click verify address. And here we are, it also shows me this address and the QR code. Um, great, so now uh, we can receive some money to it. So I will be sending again from the dev kit. Send. Oh, maybe this time I will uh, send from the simple that we just created. And I will send point 0.1. Create and send transaction. Uh, and here I choose 
expand transaction. Yep, yep. And it tells me that uh, it is spending this amount from the wallet default. Uh, great, I agree with this. And then we scan sign transaction on the software wallet. And it is broadcasted. Great. Um, we get the money on the multi signature address. Uh, and let's just uh, send them back. Rest. I go to send, I enter the amount, half of it. I also can send actually everything and uh, click subtract the amount, uh, but I will not do it. I will keep some money there. Okay, so now again we have the, um, the QR code with the PSB team. Uh, and with multi-signature, PSB team is sometimes uh, not very space efficient. Uh, so we have a uh, compressed PSBT option that is slightly optimized, so it uh, removes some information that is not necessary for our particular wallet. But also you have a full PSBT that is uh, slightly larger, uh, that actually contains a classical PSBT without using any uh, additional field and any optimization. Uh, so uh, I'm using compressed PSBT here, and if I click sign transaction, and scan it. I see that now it is telling me that I'm sending uh, 005 BTC from multi-signature address. So I know uh, that uh, exactly what wallet I'm spending from. And also showing the fee, uh, including the percentage. Okay, I confirm. And now I need to scan sign transaction. So I'm scanning this. Okay, and now on the top I see that actually one signature is acquired. So I have one, but I need two. Uh, so now I need to scan the same thing with another device. So I go and do sign transaction. It scans. It shows me everything. Uh, you have the same amount, the same address, the fee. I confirm. So sign in with another key. Uh, and scan sign transaction. And yeah, that's it. So the transaction got assembled and broadcasted. Um, well, that's basically everything that we need, right? So we uh, imported the wallets, uh, we set up multi-signature and single key, we uh, sent the money from all kind of wallets we want. And uh, in another video, uh, I was showing how to do it with Trezor, code card and others. Uh, so yeah, that's more or less it. Mm. Thanks and ciao.